we will now introduce a simple memory element that is called a latch. A latch uses a signal that we're going to call phi to control the output such that the output z is the input x if phi is equal to 1 and it is the previous input x0 when phi is equal to 0. And previous input here x0 means that this is the input that we had the last time the control signal phi was a 1. So what we have here to our latch is two input signals. So we have the input signal phi and we have the input signal x. And then we have the output signal z. In order to realize this latch, we need to make a state transition graph because we need to remember if we're going to output a zero or a one when the latch is in the locked state. That is when we have phi equal to zero. Our first state will represent the situation where we're going to output a zero from our latch and the second state is going to represent the situation where we're going to output a one from the latch. So as you can see now, I'm writing this as a more graph. Now assume that we are in the zero states, we are outputting a zero. Now as long as our control signal phi here is a zero, then we just keep outputting a zero. So for zero, zero and zero, one, we will keep outputting our zero. We will also stay in this state and output a zero if our control signal is one and our input is a zero. And only if we have our control signal one and the input one, then we will go to the state that we call one and we will start outputting a one. And in this state, we will continue to output a one as long as our control signal is a zero and as long as our control signal is a one and our input x is a one. And when we have our control signal being one and x is zero, then we go back to our zero state and start outputting a zero. So this state transition graph exactly implements the behavior that we had here for our latch. So let us write our Carnot map for this state transition graph. So we have already done our state assignment. We call the first state zero and the second state we call a one. In the Carnot map, we're going to use the state Q here for the rows of our map. And then our two inputs, phi and x, they will be the columns in our Carnot map. And since we have a more graph, we only need a function for the next state because the output will only depend on the state anyway. So we don't need a specific Carnot map for the output function. So now assume that we are in state zero and have the inputs zero, zero, then we stay in the state zero. If we have zero, one, we also stay in the state zero. If we have one, one, we go to state one. And if we have a one, zero, we stay in the state we call zero. If we now are in the state that we call one instead, if we have a zero, zero, we stay in the state one. For zero, one, we also stay in the state one. For one, one, we also stay in the state one. And for one, zero, we go back to the state zero. Our two essential prime implicants are these two prime implicants here. But in this case, we want to make this an asynchronous sequential circuit. And in that case, we want it to be hazard free. So we also need to have this prime implicant here in our realization because that will make it hazard free. So we can write our Boolean function Q plus, which is equal to Q phi prime or Q x or phi x. And this includes all our prime implicants. And you can see that Q x here is the consensus term of the other two terms. And we can also write our output as just being our state. If we want to make a synchronous realization of this, then we need to include a D element. But in our case, we want to make this implementation asynchronous instead. That means that we can short circuit the Q and the Q plus terms in our circuit 
which will give us this realization that we have here. And just to recap, this asynchronous realization required that we used first all the prime implicants that we had in our Carnot maps. We needed to have that our state assignment was race free. And since we're only changing one variable here in when we do the state transition, this is clearly the case. And finally, we needed to have an asynchronously realizable graph and that we have if all our states have successor states for all possible inputs. And that we can see is also clearly the, clearly the case.